Right, we continue from the last video and hopefully I will finish with the RDF schema in this video and then we'll start learning about OWL in the next video. Please stay with me because this stuff is very interesting and hopefully it'll help you understand the idea behind uh, Semantic Web much, much better. Now, uh, we learned in the last t video that, focus on this one please, that using the Semantic Web Standards by adding one property to the metadata about, for example, an existing resource, the one, the example we had before, that resource becomes a member of a class that it wasn't a member of before. I remember when we learned about how things are perceived in object-oriented sense and in the semantic web uh, on the RDFS and OWL approach. Yes, remember when we see the, uh, talked about, excuse me, when we talked about. Um, <coughs> members of, of classes and how they are perceived and how they are understood and uh, the way that RDFS and OWL approach looks at things you know and sort of in the opposite direction now this ability of RDF of RDF resources to become members of classes based on their data values has made semantic web technology popular in areas such as for example medical research and intelligence agencies now remember that you know from here we don't have to declare that something is a member of a class if we just give it a property and that property has a, as its domain a certain class then the, the subject or that individual or that resource that we give this property to automatically becomes a member of that class likewise if we have a domain of a certain property then whenever we give the property a value that value becomes automatically a, a member of that domain class if you don't understand this please go back go and watch the previous video now this of course is a very interesting feature it led many researchers in many areas to actually exploit and use semantic web technology now the idea here is that researchers can actually accumulate data with little apparent structure so they can collect mu mu much data where you know little app where with little apparent structure but they can see the structure when they use the semantic web technologies why it's because sometimes when we add properties and try to link things to each other properties of course they have domains and ranges then many resources turn out to be member members of of, of some classes and the relationships between them become much much clearer now just again to recap that RDFS actually lets us define classes as subclasses of each other and properties as sub-properties of each other. This idea here, this concept here of properties being sub-properties of each other, this is not in, uh, this doesn't exist in object-oriented systems. So this is slightly different, but that's very advantageous. Why? It's because we have more information, we have more information now, and the more information we have, the more possibilities that we have and we can do more with our data now so this actually broadens for example the possibilities for how we can use sparkle to retrieve information yeah because we have more information now we have properties as sub properties of one another unlike object oriented so for example just going back to that example quickly if we say for example that um, the class AB musician that we learned about we added in the previous videos if we say in our um, um, RDFS uh, RDF schema that if that or, or we or, or wherever we add that class and we say it's actually a subclass of fourth person, so the f fourth vocabulary is uh, you know just to describe the concept of a person or a concept concept of an individual. Sorry, my phone is ringing. I'll answer it later. It's just vibrating. Yeah, if we add that, yes, then if we query an RDF, RDFS, RDFS aware processor for the phone numbers of all the fourth person instances in a data set that included uh, the, the, the two previous files that we used before, two data sets that we used before, then it, we, it, we will give, get back as a result Richard's phone number. Why? It's because automatically uh, Richard is in the class musicians which is also in the class of persons yes because we as we said here we declared that musician is a subclass of class person so whenever we query a person we will get automatically the subclasses of that class 
or something like that now I'm going to stop here I know the video is quite short but I'm going to stop here because I need to start uh, from like uh, from 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 the beginning of video to explain what owl is and what ontologies are and the rest of the relevant information thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time